JJ Reddick and Kendrick Perkins, uh, the new media member, JJ Reddick and Kendrick Perkins, had a little back and forth on first take the other day. Now, quite frankly, I didn't see it, but I saw the clip on um, Twitter. And I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was very interesting because of a few reasons. Um, number one, it was over the MVP debate, which I think is a very interesting debate, which I also think no one has solidified yet. I think um, Joker is right there in the run, and I think Giannis is right there in the run, and I think Joel is right there in the one running. I think if it's ever been as close a race, it's this year. Um, race has been extremely close, and I think it's still to be decided. I don't think uh, we're 66 games in. I'm not sure how many games in those teams are. They're somewhere between 63 and 67 or 68, I'm sure. Uh and even at that number of games, for those of you who don't know, we play 82 games in the NBA. Even at that amount of games, I am still not sure that the MVP race has been decided. Who's also right up in that race is Jason Tatum. I know, quite frankly, he's not placed there a bunch, but here's why Jason Tatum is in that race for me. Jason Tatum's performance has been absolutely incredible. What you must understand is, and the reason, like, why you can't always just pay attention to stats. Jason Tatum could average easily six to eight more points a game. He's that good, number one. But number two, Jason Tatum has done less to do more. What do you mean by that, Draymond? Well, I'll tell you what I mean by that. Jason Tatum has done less so that Jalen Brown can do more for the ultimate good of the team so that they don't go through what they went through last year, was, which is getting to an NBA Finals and losing again. Those guys, those guys have a goal of coming out on top, winning a championship. And I personally can tell you, I can look at it and tell. I also know this from personal relationship, but screw the personal relationship. I can spot it from a mile away. Those Jason Tatum has one goal, and it's to win an NBA championship. I can tell. I can see it. I can see it in his demeanor. I can see it in his game. He's trying harder on the defensive end, as he picked up last year. He's trying harder to make plays for guys, as he started to show improvement last year. But I think he's taken an even bigger step back this year to take a much larger step forward. And it's the most valuable player, right? Is that not valuable? Because, again, if he averaged the six more points, what would people say? Would they say, uh, man, it's JT because he averaging 36 and not 30? It's quite ridiculous when you think about it that you can't take a step back and see, man, everything this guy's doing, he's still averaging 30 points, uh, five or six assists or whatnot. Um, five assists, I think, probably eight rebounds. But quite frankly, I didn't check his stats because I don't need to check his stats because my whole point is it actually does not matter. I just say to the voters out there, in, in looking at the MVP race, I'm not saying Jason Tatum is the MVP. I'm saying in looking at the MVP race, give Jason Tatum more respect. Respect the step back to take the step forward a little more because it's very valuable. And that's the name of the world the most valuable player. So, as I was saying, I think this race will still continue to go down to the wire. I don't think it's decided. Um, the whole stat padding thing, uh, accusations that, that Joker has been facing, I think is ridiculous. I think, I think if you were going to make those about Joker, you had to make those about Russ when Russ was averaging triple-double after triple-double after triple-double. And quite frankly, even if you were going to make those about Russ, I quite frankly don't care because you know how good you have to be to stat pad and get a triple-double? Like, you still have to be very good to stat pad and get a triple-double. So, like, this whole narrative of, like, oh, these guys are stat padding this. Like, if you stat pad it, you still wouldn't get a triple-double. It's not easy to get a triple-double. Stat pad or not, you got to be 
very, very, very good to stat pad and get a triple-double. And most importantly, win. That's the kicker. You can't win like 29 games in a row or 30 games in a row again. I didn't check the stats because, quite frankly, I don't care. But you can't win that many games in a row getting a triple-double and only be padding your stats. Like, common sense would say that doesn't make sense. Because how do you just keep winning? Like, at some point, your stat pattern and 30, uh, say, call it 30 wins. At some point, your stat pattern and 30 games is going to catch up to you. Like, at some point. Like, you trying to get an assist. Like, trust me, I see Joker stat lines often. There's often times where he'll have 10 or 11 assists. So if he's stat pattern. There, like, at some point, you chasing that 10th, 11th assist is going to cost y'all a game. It hasn't. So the whole narrative, and again, you're speaking to someone who just last week had uh, Gilbert Arenas on the show, and we were discussing Europeans not catching the same flat for American players for winning the championship. So understand that this is no narrative. Understand that this is no bias. Understand that these are straight facts. And understand that the stat pattern narrative is lazy. The stat pattern narrative is I don't have anything else to talk about, anything else to say. I need to say something. It's lazy. Just dissect the game. Dissect what Joker doing. Because I'll tell you what, if I go sit and really watch a game, I'll dissect the game for you. Maybe I'll do that soon. I'm going to watch a Denver Nugget game, and I'm going to dissect the game. And we're going to do it right here on the Draymond Green Show. And I'm going to tell you if Joker is stat padding or not. And if, in fact, he is, you got to be so good to stat pad and win and get them numbers that it don't really even matter. Sitting at number one in the West, 30 games in a row with a triple-double, and they said this man is stat padding. I, if that ain't a reach, if I've ever seen one before in my life. So I'm, a, I'm not going to keep going on and on about this because you get my point. But let's stop being lazy. Let's do the job. These people are actually interested in what? If you have a platform and you go on TV, they're actually interested in what you have to say. Take more pride in what you do and stop being lazy at this job. There's actually a world that you actually can <laughs> stop being lazy and go dissect these basketball games. I speak, I speak on fans not totally understanding the game because I try to do all I can to help them better understand the game. So let's do that. They're looking for it. They need it. It'll only help our game. But in order to help our game, <laughs> you got to know what you're talking about. And a lot of times in this media, not the new media, but in this media, a lot of times I be looking and I notice a lot of y'all don't know what y'all talking about. So that's your last pass. We got to start dissecting these games again. What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward.